Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. We are so glad to have you with us today. Thank you for joining us for Jesus the Healer. There's answers for you. Yes. Why? Because yes. the Word is our answer. Yes. And we're so grateful that we get to bring the message to you today. And uh, we ask you, add your faith with what you hear. Yes. You know, the Word tells us in Hebrews, it was talking about uh, God's people who were delivered from Egypt. And it says, the Word was preached unto them as well as unto us. But the Word preached did not profit them. Uh -huh. And then it tells why they didn't mix their faith. Yes. Not mixing their faith in with the word they heard. Yes. So it's not just about hearing. It's about us releasing our faith and attaching our faith yes. to that word we hear because faith converts the word to power. That's right. Amen. And so when you attach your faith, that word is quickened. And uh, it, it's converted into power when you add your faith to it for your life. Amen. And we've been teaching on the mind. We've been teaching on right thinking because when we think right, we can receive right. When we think wrong, we receive wrong. Amen. Uh, people think, people may say, you know, I just don't know why wrong things happen to me. Well, you can't go to wrong places and have right things happen. That's right. That's right. Likewise, you can't have wrong thinking and have right things happen. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 And so God wants us to think right. Well, what is thinking right? It's thinking in line with the word. That's right. And it's taking on God's thoughts because the more we think like him, the sweeter life is. The more we think like him, the more we're able to receive of what he's already made ours. Amen. And uh, so that's why we're so glad that God has had us teaching on the mind because uh, the way we think affects every arena of our life. The way we think doesn't just affect the mental arena. It affects the financial arena. It affects the physical arena. It affects our marriages, our relationships. It affects every single thing. And so when God's having us to teach on the mind, he's dealing with the root of situations. And uh, when we adjust this up here, <laughs> the thought life. Yes. Um, it just makes so corrections. It flips, it flips the levers in other arenas. Yes. Because the word tells us, as a man thinks in his heart, so yes. is he. Yes. So in other words, um, the life that we're living now yes. is a reflection of how we're thinking. Yes. Why? Because as a man thinks, yes. so is he, or so is his life. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. And so uh, I don't know about you, but there's always something that can be uh, come up in my life, yes. something I can always be advanced in my life, promoted in some way, go further in some things. So we never arrive. We never say, yep, I've done it all, reached it all. It's it. I'm, I'm it. I'm all that and more. No, no, that doesn't describe any of us. <laughs> There's always more. Always. And that's the wonderful thing about God. He never runs out. Amen. 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 And so uh, to move into more, we have to go, we have to go into more in our thought life. Yes. Amen. 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 We've been taking as our golden text, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. And it says, as Paul was writing to Timothy, he said, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. He's given this to us. It already, this is not what we're praying for. It says he has given, he hasn't given us a spirit of fear, so he has given us these other things. And so we have to know how to guard and protect what he's made ours. Don't change, don't exchange it for something that is less than. Amen. Amen. 
the sound mind he has made ours yes. has to be guarded and it's guarded by, by having thoughts of the word. Yes. We have to protect it. We have to flow with that sound mind by taking on the thoughts of the word and the, and the Bible calls that renewing the mind yes. so that renew, renewing the mind is just thinking like God, That's taking on yeah. his thoughts after him. Amen. Amen. And then Philippians chapter four, verse 11 in the amplified classic translation. This is another verse that we've been uh, visiting regularly in the past episodes. It's what Paul wrote when he says, not that I am implying that I was in any personal want, for I have learned how to be content, mm -hmm. satisfied to the point where I am not disturbed or disquieted in whatever state I am. Now, this is the way a sound mind functions right there. Undisturbed, yes. Yes. not disquieted, yes. not troubled, not harassed. And Paul said, I had to learn. Mm -hmm. I had to learn. Mm -hmm. yes. We have to practice at not being troubled when troubling things show up. That's right. We have to practice at not being disturbed when disturbing things become obvious. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 Why? We don't take our cues from out here. Yeah. Right. We take our cues from what's in us. That's right. And so we want to make sure the thoughts of the word are in us. Yes. Amen. Amen. We have divine help in that. Yes. Thank God as we pour in the word. It helps us in our thought life. Yes. As we pray in the spirit, it helps us to stay connected to our spirits so that we're not just entrenched in that mental arena. That's right. yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. So praying in the spirit and being full of the spirit, yes. primarily through praying in the spirit, praying in other tongues, mm -hmm. will help us to live full of the spirit mm -hmm. so that our spirits take the lead. Yes. Our yes. spirits yes. dominate us. Yes. And why do we want our spirits to dominate us? Because that's where the life is. Yes. That's where the power is. Yes. That's where your faith resides is in your spirit. Yes. And so we want our spirits to take, a, take the lead and the nine fruits of the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, we're encouraged, not just encouraged, commanded in the New yes. Testament, walk in the spirit. Yes. Well, why? That's, that, is the out, that is to be the outstanding feature of the New Testament believer yes. is in the spirit, yes. Yes. walking in the spirit. Yes. Walking in the spirit means letting the forces and the powers and the flows in your spirit dominate you. Yes. That's what it means. Yeah. It doesn't mean yes. something about a foggy uh, look over your face and talking in yeah. ways that people cannot even connect your sentences. They don't even know what you're talking. It's not that. The nine fruits of the Spirit are in your spirit. Let them, let them take the lead. Yes. Amen. Uh, as I said, the nature of God is in you. The life of yes. God is in you, yes. but it's housed in your spirit and it's to flow up and out and dominate right. the mind, the body, and you're the setting you're living in. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, so we have the help of the word. We have the help of the spirit, but also there's another help that we must draw on. And that's the help of the local church. Uh -huh. yes. The yes. help of being rightly connected, yes. 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 rightly connected. The Bible says that God has, has fitly joined us together. He's talking about with one another mm -hmm. as members of the body. You are a member of the body, but you're not the whole body. Uh -huh. I'm a member, but we each have a part and we have to be rightly connected. Yes. It says, and it, he set us in the body as it pleased him, yes. not as it pleases us, as it pleases him, yes. but what pleases him will please us. Yes. <laughs> That's why many people live, live lives they're not pleased with because they're not in the place that he has for them to be. Yes. And so they're not pleased because he's not pleased. He's not mad. He just knows that you won't function at optimum yeah. until you're where he places you. And so it says that we are fitly joined together. You have to know where do I fit? Know this. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to fit in the body of Christ and you need to be in a, in a local church because that's where the body gathers is in that local church, a, a part of the body. Amen. The, the body of Christ in the whole earth is one body. And part, part of the body is in heaven. Part of the family is in heaven, yes. right? Part of the family is on the earth. Yes. But we need to get together yes. <laughs> and bring our supply to one another because that's where we fit. Now, if you have something out of joint, uh, then that, that is going to be lacking a supply. Yes. Um, <clears throat> 
oh my goodness, about six months ago or so, we were renovating our offices here at the ministry. And so we were all working, getting different equipment and moving things around. And I picked up a large box and it wasn't, it wasn't, it was heavy, but it was more awkward than heavy. Uh And so I couldn't, it was so large, I couldn't walk with it in front of me because you can't see. (laughs) So I just flung it to the side, just like a child, just, you know, put it on your hip, you know, and take off going. And when I did, I pulled a rib out of place. Well, I knew that something went out of place. When it wasn't in place, uh, I could feel it. (laughs) I could feel it. And uh, then I tried to keep functioning. I didn't realize I'd pulled it out of place. But I, when I pulled it out of place, I go, hmm, I feel that. And I'd lay down at night in the bed. And no matter how I laid, I felt it. Yeah. When people are not in place in the body, they're going to feel it. Oh, yes. Their finances will feel it. Their health will feel it. Their peace will feel it. The mind will feel it. Their marriage can feel it. All kinds of things can feel it. And so I, uh, I had a, a, we have a precious gal in the church who, uh, you know, will give us a massage at times. And so she came over to my house and she said to me, she said, did you know you got a rib out place? And I said, well, that could explain <laughs> some things. Yeah. That could explain yeah. some things. So I went back to the chiropractor and, and he put it back in place. And it, it did not go back in place and stay there the first time. He said, Nancy, he said, you have stretched out some ligaments when you went out of place, it stretched out some ligaments. He said, I'll put it back in place, but that ligament's still stretched, and so it's not holding it back in place. So you have to give time for that ligament. Now, listen, I'm not a doctor, so don't, 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 don't. <laughs> you, if I know a little bit, I'll share it with you, but see how little I know about that. But he's basically saying because when it was out of place, it stretched the ligament. Uh-huh. I can put it back in place, but the ligament's still stretched. Uh-huh. So it takes time yes. for that ligament to come back down into its proper size. Oh, yes and for the inflammation to go and stuff. Mm -hmm. And once it does, then it will help hold it in place. So you'll have to come more than once Mm -hmm. to get it put back in until that ligament comes into place. Mm -hmm. That's why, excuse me, you got to hear the word more than once. Things don't go in place because you heard it once. That's That's why you go to go to church more than once because things don't go back and stay in place just by once. Amen. Amen. Find your place. You say, well, how do I find it? You listen to the Holy Ghost. You listen to the Spirit of God. He'll direct Mm. you to the right local church where you can be under the anointing of a pastor that feeds your life. He feeds you what God says. Well, I can read my Bible and understand what and know what God says. Well, let me say it to you this way. If just reading a book would do it all Mm -hmm. for you, Why don't we just give our children books and not send them to school? That's right. That's good. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because we will advance quicker. Yes. Plus, we'll learn more accurately when we hear it from someone who's already lived it. Yes. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Wow. And the more we take our place in the body, the more we occupy our place in the body. And you can't be occupying without realizing you have a part Mm -hmm. in the local church. You have a part in someone else's life. Mm -hmm. And um, when we realize that, our spiritual development will happen quicker because we can, you you know, um, thank God for the Holy Ghost. He is our our teacher, but he also teaches us through the office of the pastor. He teaches us through the office of an apostle, a prophet, Mm -hmm. an evangelist a teacher. He does use them to teach us through. And some, sometimes people are waiting on God to teach them something and he's waiting on them to get in the place where he has assigned them yes. so they can hear from the man that God filled his mouth with their answer. Wow. Amen. And that's what a pastor, yes. uh, pastor does. He feeds the sheep. Yes, yes. And uh, he safeguards the sheep. Yes. He watches over the, the sheep. And sometimes people, if they would understand this, because listen, a lot of times people haven't been taught this. Right, right. They have not been taught this. Now, my mother, my mother taught us the habit of church attendance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was not optional. Do we have to go to church today? If you asked her that, you're getting in trouble. You, you getting, why? Because that was a law of her home. Yes. Yes. That was a law. 
I didn't. I never got up and asked mother on Monday, "Do I have to go to school today?" Right. Right. Yeah. If I ask that, I'm in for trouble yeah. Yeah. because she, I'm I'm violating a set law of the household. Yeah. I'm trying to argue yeah. with a how. Ha- when I say, "Do I have to go?" I'm arguing right. yes. Yes. with what she already set in place. Uh-huh. So my mother put in us the habit of church attendance. Now let me go. We were reading in the previous uh, episode, but I want us to look there again in Hebrews chapter 10. In verse 25, I want you to read, see these words, the Amplified Classic Translation. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. It reads, not forsaking, not forsaking. What's forsaking? You give it up. Yes. Don't give up mm-hmm. or neglect to assemble together. Well, where are you going to do that? In the local church. Yeah. Yeah. As believers, as is, look at this word, as is the habit. Mm-hmm. Yes. Of some people. Now, you can have bad physical habits. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, alcoholism, bad physical habit. Yes. Mm-hmm. You say, well, it's an addiction. Well, it became an addiction because somebody put a habit in place. Yes. Yes. You put a habit in place and the devil will energize it. Uh, yes. You remove that habit, he's got nothing to energize. Yes. Um, smoking, a bad physical habit because of what it does to the body. Well, if bad physical habits will have a negative impact on our life, what do we think bad spiritual habits will do for us? And here he's saying that church needs to be a habit. Yes. A habit. Why? Because then we show up to get our answers. We show up to hear. And God will put our answer in another man's mouth. Mm -hmm. And people say, well, I I just go to the church that's closest to me. Well, Mm -hmm. the thing is, is that if that's not where God set you, even though they may teach the word, uh, they're not anointed for your life the way the person, the pastor is where God set you. That's That's why you look to the spirit where Mm. does God direct me? By his spirit, where has he ordained that my life be fed? Right. Yes. Now, see this. Now, we're still talking about a sound mind. That's yes. Right. Yes. Because right thinking is knowing that he's going to minister to your life and feed your life through one avenue of the local church, yes. through having a pastor. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. And this is part of Jesus being your healer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Because we have to uh, think right to receive right. Yes. And being in the local church and having a pastor helps us to think right. right. You know yourself. I can learn quicker by sitting and listening to a sermon by someone when they tell maybe an experience that happened to them over a period of time and what they learned out of that test. They can start their sermon talking about the test, but end the sermon talking about their victory in the test. So in a short span of a sermon, I hear not only the need addressed, I hear how to arrive at the victory of that test. Some uh, 30 minutes in an hour, I can learn that. If I'm going to say, I'm just going to be Mm self-taught, how long will it take me to find that process? When a man that's already been there, Mm -hmm. as an example... You know, he can tell me in a moment. So that's why God wants us to advance. He wants us to accelerate as, as, as quickly as, as we can go Mm -hmm. in our spiritual development. Why? Because the further we advance, Mm -hmm. the more we're skillful in our victory. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, being part of a local church, that's where God is going to be able to uh, prescribe some things for your life. Yes. Yes. You know, I, I re, I'm, I'm, rem, I'm reminded of a time I got up one morning and I was teaching, you know, is when I was pastoring and I got up, uh, it was a Sunday morning and I, I, I knew what I was going to preach on. I had my sermon prepared. And uh, when I got to church, there was a precious woman. She was a traveling minister And uh, she lived in the area, not close by, but lived within driving range. And so I came to church that morning prepared to teach on something. But when I walked out and I saw her there, I also saw her need on her face. Mm -hmm. I saw the, if I could say it, it almost seemed like a cloud, a heaviness over her face. 
because I was able to see her. Yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And when I saw her face and I knew that she was under the weight of a test, I didn't know what the test was, but God changed my sermon when I saw her face. Wow. And I preached her answer and she had just been diagnosed with a terminal condition and God put my her answer in my mouth. Wow. And she was encouraged. Yeah. See, she's not alone at home fighting this all by herself. Yes. Right. Now she's got the help of, of, this, of a setting of faith. Yes. Amen. And I tell you what, to think right, you need the help of the setting of faith. Yes. This is why we send our, our, our young children to school. Uh -huh. Why? Because we know that their academic advancement will be accelerated in a setting where they are being taught by a teacher who knows. Yes. Amen. 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 Children, now see, I did my share of skipping school. I don't know if any of y'all out there <laughs> did your share of skipping school. I did my share, but the thing is, is that in skipping school, there were things missed. Yes. Right. And when a test came, if I wasn't there mm -hmm. for the day the questions on that right. test were addressed, right. Yes. I'm going to fail those questions yes. yeah. and it could cause me to fail the test. Yes. When we're in the local church, we're getting answers yes. uh -huh. and there's coming a test. Oh, yes. <laughs> and if we're there to hear our answer, yes. the outcome of the test is different. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. So and so this is part of the honor. Think of it. Yes. Think of it. So few locations in the earth where your mind has the opportunity to hear what will renew it. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yes. You're not hearing it at the mall. Right. No. You're not hearing it at the theater. No. You're not hearing it maybe at the neighbor's house. Right. You're not hearing it at the local restaurant. Mm -hmm. The local yeah. church is the place God has assigned and ordained for you to go anytime yes. and every yes. time yes. to hear from God. Yes. It's an appointment with God. Oh, yes. 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 Amen. Yes. Amen. Well, I'll just sit at home and hear from God. That's good that you hear from God, but you hear more in the local church. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. yes. And so I just encourage you because here, yes, the name of this program is Jesus the Healer, but he's going to bring you into that healing flow mm -hmm. through the help of a local church yes. and the help of having a pastor. Because yes. see, although something belongs to you, you have to learn what belongs to you. That's right. yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. You not only have to learn what belongs to you, you have to learn the ways of how to cooperate with what belongs yes. to you. Yes. You know, you can work, you can walk by the, the window of a baker and you can see these lovely works of art, <laughs> things of beauty, these yeah. cakes or pastries or these wonderful things and you can be so impressed and want to have it yeah. and you can partake of it in a measure, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean you know how to make it. That's right. Amen. Amen. It's, it's not enough to know what you can have. You have to know how to cooperate. Yes. What is my part? Yes. How do I bring my part? Yes. And in the local church, this is where this is taught, that we're taught how to bring our part. Yes. Amen. 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 So my mother gave us this habit of church attendance. Mm -hmm. And uh, because she gave us the habit of church attendance, when we left home, when all four of us kids w left home, we went to college, we all went to church because we had this habit. Yes. Right. What did that habit do? It kept us in the place where God could reach us. That's yes. right. mm -hmm. God is present everywhere, but he's not manifesting everywhere. That's right. yes. Yes. God is present everywhere, but he's not moving everywhere. That's right. And so when the word is, when God has given his place and the word is being given its place in a setting of the local church, mm -hmm. the anointing will come into manifestation. Yeah. And when you're in the local church, that anointing can reach your life. It can reach your need. Yeah. It can reach your thought life. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. A sound mind needs sound fellowship. Yes. Because God's not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Mm -hmm. You have to protect that mind. You have to know how to handle that sound mind. You have to know what to let in and what to, what to keep out. Mm -hmm. And you learn that best in a, in, the, in a local church that is teaching you the Word of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. What an honor. Yes. How many countries would love to have the freedom to assemble oh, yes. to hear? Yes. 
and we have it. In the United States, we have that. Let's honor that. Amen. Because not only is it showing honor for God, but it's going to, it's going to help us in our spiritual growth and development. Amen. Amen. Uh, as you grow up spiritually, more doesn't belong to you. But you learn how to cooperate with what has belonged to you all along. Yes. Oh, that's Amen. 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 You, you have someone that got saved today and then someone who's been serving the Lord for 50 years. They all had the exact same things that belong to them. Yes. Whether they're yes. saved today or whether they've been walking with God for 50 years. Yes. The same blessings, the same benefits belong to both. Yes. But as you grow, you learn how to cooperate yes. and receive what belongs to you. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the local church and having a pastor that loves you to keep, to, to bring these things to you. And we are so thankful to be able to bring this word to you. But I tell you what, this, the diet that comes from having a pastor, it's a safeguard for your family and a safeguard for your life. Amen. It's a safeguard for your sound mind. It's a safeguard for right thinking yes. is to have the fellowship of faith. Yes. Yes. Amen. And, yes. and to be in the fellowship of those who love what you love, yes. honor yes. what you honor, yes. hold to what you hold to mm-hmm. so that when you're faced with the need for a miracle, those people are standing with you agreeing and you're, and you're, you're edified yes. and you're fortified in your stand of faith instead of being drawn away by Thoughts of fear, words of fear from someone else, words of doubt. You don't only have to come overcome your opposition, but you have to overcome what they're saying. (laughs) Amen. And so thank God for this instruction that comes to us of the word, not forsaking or neglecting to assemble together. And especially it says in the last phrase of that, especially all the more faithfully as you see the day approaching. So it, it, uh, the local church becomes even more vital yes. in the in the last days. Yes. And so why? Because that's going to help us to stay right on course. Yes. Amen. In these last days that we're living accurately. Yes. Well, these are some of the things we're teaching out of our book, Peace, Living Free from Worry. We invite you to get hold of it. It'll be a blessing to your life. Go to DufresneMinistries.org and we'll get you your copy. And until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. Nancy Dufresne teaches how to close the door to worry, fear, and doubt in this book about the peace of God. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. Please join us for our annual Holy Ghost meetings in Marietta, California, January 6th through the 11th, 2023 with Nancy Dufresne. We are also excited to welcome Kenneth Copeland and Richard Roberts as our special guests. For more information, please visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible.